Hello, this is a basic tutorial on how to record using a parabolic microphone. How a parabolic microphone is different from other microphones you may have used is that it's highly directional, a very high gain, and you have to point it at the subject uh, to get the best gain, the highest isolation, and the best recordings. Um, if you, if you don't know where the bird is, you can try some techniques. The techniques is the pan and tilt uh, technique. You, see a, you hear a bird, but you don't exactly know exactly where it is, and you want to know exactly where it is when you point it at it. So you could kind of go this sideways and up and down when you get the general area where the bird is. Say this one here. And I'm going to use headphones as my feedback mechanism. I'm going to go here. I'm going to listen with the headphones. I'm going to point the microphone up here so I can hear it. Here, now it's here. You hear it really loud. Now I'm going to move it up and down. I found the peak that way. I'm going to move it this way and that way until I find the peak. So I have a general idea of where it is, but I can't see the bird. And you can see how pinpoint you have to be if you just turn it 10 degrees away, you get slightly less gain. So I can still cannot see the bird, but I can still record it. Now, the idea is, and we have some wind up there. This is another important point when you're using a parabolic microphone. Try not to use it when it's windy, because you hear the wind in the background, the trees moving that's destroying the quality of the recording. Otherwise, it would be an amazing, good recording of a red-eyed vireo. So when I have it targeted here and I'm looking at it, the best idea is to watch for the bird to move. If you see the bird move, you have to follow it with the parabolic microphone to get the best recording. That's why we have a clear dish, so you can see the bird move. When it moves, now red-eyed vireo, they just sit there and they just sing all day long. So that's the general idea of how you find a bird and how you record a bird using a parabolic microphone. You use feedback mechanism with your headphones and you record, uh, find the bird and follow the bird. Now, there's some other things you need to know about recording with a parabolic microphone. If you have a 24-bit recorder, uh, you'll need to pay attention to the uh, level meters that are on the recorder device. Um, and when you, like I just recorded that red-eyed vireo up here, um, you'll want to watch the meters and make sure they're about fi minus 15 to minus 20 in general when you're average or when you find the bird. The reason why it should be at least minus 15 is there's some a lot of high frequency fluctuations in birds in their songs. So if you hit one of those high fluctuations, um, it can still clip uh, because the, your meters act slow usually. And being slow, uh, they're not going to pick up that inflection fast enough and it will clip. So if you keep it down to minus 15, you'll be uh, okay. Now, with today's 32-bit recorders, it's not as big a deal. Um, basically, 32-bit recorders are designed to hook up to the microphone and record whatever you want, and you don't have to mess with any, any uh, gain settings at all, and it supposedly doesn't clip. Now, there are issues, uh, certain conditions, where you can still can clip 32-bit recorders. That's when you exceed the input uh, rating of the, your recorder. Check the recorder uh, specifications that you're using. Some are minus four or plus four dB max input. Some are minus 20 max input. Careful about those who say that they get the uh, plus 20 uh, max input gain uh, input uh, signal. Some of the, um, probably most of them, have an attenuator built in to allow that. Now we don't like attenuators because. When we're recording lower uh, level sounds and recording at uh, birds that are distant, and so you'll still need a lot of gain. 
So if you record with something that has a minus 20 dB input, you'll have to amplify it a lot later. And a lot of those recorders have very poor uh, equivalent input noises at lower gains. So that's all for that. Um, so you get the general idea, uh, the basic uh, recording techniques of how to use a parabolic microphone. It's pretty simple. And the advantage of parabolic microphones is you can get the quality of recordings like you never could before. Um, I see a bird, but it's not the red-eyed vireo here. And the red-eyed vireo now it's moved a little bit. And I'll see if I can find it again. And there it is. It sounds like we have a bit of a uh, another bird in here. Sounds like we have a cerulean bird in the background. And see if you go away from the bird, it magically almost disappears. Get the bird, it's there. You can still hear wind in the background, even though the leaves aren't moving as much up here, it's still running the recording. So please try to record when there's no wind or a very low wind. And it moved again. Follow, track, and record. Okay, what are some other tips on how to use a parabolic microphone? A lot of times a lot of people ask, uh, well, there's the limitations and there's best ways to use a parabolic microphone to pick up the best uh, birds. If you're trying to get isolated birds, the best thing to do is to try to get a bird isolated in the view of the parabolic microphone. Say I have this red eye zero that we've been playing with here. It's up in the air, as you see I'm pointing up in the air. There's no other birds in the close vicinity. Therefore, I'm getting a highly isolated bird by not having anything in the fringes of the uh, picking up on the parabolic. So it's good to, to be able to pick up a bird in the high end of trees because you can point it at the, at, up at, at the bird. If um, wind is another issue that you have to be careful, make sure there's no wind. Make sure you don't have a lot of handling noise, like changing the position of your hand, um, uh, heavy breathing, things like that, that'll show up on the recording. Another thing to watch out for, if you have a bird, let's say is down a lower on the ground floor, try to make idea so that uh, move around and position yourself so that you can get the bird uh, isolated away from other birds in the background. Anything that's in front of the parabolic microphone, no matter the distance, it'll still pick it up. If it's closer, it'll sound louder, but if it's further away, and we have a neat cuckoo there. If it's further away, it'll still pick it up just like it picked up that cuckoo. Now, that's not our intended bird though, say there was a bird over close. To get the higher isolated, we don't want that other bird in the background. So the idea is to position yourself so that you can isolate that bird. Um, same goes with uh, road noise and general human generated noise. Try to isolate yourself by um, getting f uh, a good distance away from roads and highways. Um, I would say at least, at least a few miles from the nearest small highway. Uh, it could be up to five miles away from a 
like a major interstate, things like that. Uh, and it depends very much on the quality that you expect your recordings to be. Um, the more noise you have in a general region, uh, the less general quality your recordings will be. The, if you get into a really quiet area, you'll have the best possible recordings. And uh, with the roads, uh, try not to point the dish towards the noise subject. Um, always uh, push, move yourself again. Move and position yourself so that you're pointing away from where the, uh, the noise source is. And then you'll get the, also the best recordings. Those are some other tips on how to get better recordings from your parabolic microphone that no one else told you about. Okay, now, we have a special uh, microphones that we call our Amplified Series. Now, there's specific issues that you need to know and some uh, recording techniques you need to know when you're using uh, the uh, Amplified Series. They have gain controls. Uh, you rotate the gains counterclockwise to increase the gain. Uh, now what you want to do, and mostly people use the amplified versions if they're using a little small handheld recorder like I have here, permanently attached to the handle. It makes it really easy, no cables other than your headphone. Um, and then you can also even use wireless uh, Bluetooth headphones, a low latency Bluetooth headphones if you really wanted to. Um, but the general idea, say this is like a 32-bit uh, Zoom H1 Essential, and you just hook it up and you'll still need some gain. Um, with all of these things um, so to get the best recordings and it's not like an XLR they do have a lot more noise so you want more gain uh, coming in louder larger signal to come in and it uh, swamps out the uh, the low level noise that you find on the recorders so you want to on 24 bit I just usually uh, turn the gain down to zero um, some of them recorders if you turn it less than uh, what is it like less than 20% of the gain total gain that sometimes it goes into a uh, a uh, attenuation attenuator and you really don't want to do that you want to find or know what your recorder does if it you don't want it to go into attenuation because it's defeating the purpose of the gain so you turn the gain up and you if you have a 24-bit recorder um, you turn the gain all the way down or, it might, or around 20 dB or 20% uh, figure um, and then you, then you adjust the gain on the back here for your, and watch your meters. And trying to get a good amount of gain, um, usually uh, I would say at least a 20 to 40 dB of gain on, on the rotation. That's like uh, from around 12 o'clock position over to or about a 10 o'clock position, at least that. Uh, but if you have and specific the H1, a Zoom H1 Essential, it has a built-in 26 dB gain. So the problem with that is you have to turn the gain down. Uh, turn the gain down to about the two o'clock position. You'll still get about a 10, 15 dB of gain, uh, of high quality gain from our internal preamps, and, you'll st and then you'll get a better recording uh, overall. Uh, these H1s, they work pretty well, I've had it going up to plus 9 dB and not clipping out, but uh, at uh, 12 o'clock gain, it'll bird that was really close and loud bird. Um, but for the best part, for you, uh, you probably don't want to do that. Uh, just turn it down to uh, like in between in 2 and 12 o'clock area and just uh, be careful a little bit. And that's all you need to know about the amplified. It's really simple and it's designed with the low noise input uh, gain to allow uh, better recordings on small handheld recorders. A lot of people just use it for headphones as well. Um, and you can see how directional this, this microphone is. Here's a cricket. I can go a little bit off of it and I can find the cricket. And there's the cricket sound. Now I can move closer and try to get above the cricket and get the best sound on isolation of that cricket possible. But as you can see, I have to be uh, cricket and insect noises. You really have to be really targeted. I'll move off.
and now you can't hear the cricket at all. So that's some general ideas on how to use the amplified uh, amplified series and getting your best recordings. Okay, you want an example of how to pick up and uh, how much of a directionality a, uh, a parabolic has. I'm about 10 feet away from a cricket here and I am uh, going to sweep it here and find it. Okay, I'm getting closer. See, I'm moving it around trying to find it. And don't mind the wind on top of me. And there's, there's the bird, uh, the cricket. Now if I move, I move 10%, 10 degrees away. You can see how it dropped in. I move 20 degrees, and it's quite a bit different. I move 40 degrees, and you can almost not hear it. I move 90 degrees, I think it stopped now though, and you don't really hear it anymore. Now I'll go back. And then you can get a better recording and say, I got wind up there again. Wind is our enemy. We don't like wind because you can hear wind. Now you can walk up and kind of, I don't know where it is right now. I'm not going to find it. We'll be lucky if we see it. I can't find it now. Oh. And we can get closer to it and we can go straight above it and get a really highly isolated one recording. And see how that sounds. So that's how you uh, improve your parabolic microphone recordings. And it's just a super fun thing to do, super fun hobby, super fun to go out and record all kinds of things, come home, and play them back, uh, collection. Um, you can do all kinds of things with uh, parabolic microphones. You can input them into uh, uh, long tracks of different uh, kind of things, and uh, sell sound effects, all kinds of things you can do, and it's just a lot of fun.